All right, what is going on guys? I am TJ bringing you a brand new video on my channel and today we're going to be doing the first installment of the Versus series for the 2019 NFL mock draft college football season type thing. It doesn't really revolve around that, but it definitely is, you know, college football and NFL draft oriented because I compare prospects and stuff like that. Now the first episode for this particular season, I guess is what I'm going to call it. Season two of the Versus series is what we'll call it. So for season two, the first episode is going to be quarterbacks. We're going to be taking Taking a look at Dwayne Haskins, who a lot of people think and is pretty much a majority consensus that he is the best quarterback in the class by and far. And then we're also going to be taking a look at Drew Locke, who a lot of people think is a guaranteed first rounder. And a lot of people think that Dwayne Haskins is running away with the number one quarterback ranking in this class. But I think it's a lot closer than some people may, you know, like guys like Todd McShay and Mel Kuyper and Matt Miller may think it is. But with all that being said, let's hop right into season two, episode one of the Versus series. All right, guys. So the first prospect we're going to be taking a look at today is Dwayne Haskins, the redshirt sophomore out of the Ohio State University. And some of the strengths that I have written down for him are that his quick game accuracy is very good. He's very accurate over the middle of the field. His pocket presence slash mobility is very good. He's got a crazy, crazy strong arm and it's very accurate. His stature in the pocket is good. He makes good decisions and his fundamentals are good. Now, just going over some of these points really quick. Uh, one that I want to focus on is his fundamentals. The dude is very upright in the pocket. His throwing motion is very clean, very crisp, and his footwork is very good. He doesn't, his his feet don't panic when he gets in a bad situation. He's always firm. He's always, you know, moving his feet the right way. He's not, you know, just off balance all the time, trying to make weird, crazy platform throws and stuff like that. He also makes good decisions. He, I mean, interceptions and stuff like that are, sometimes they are because of a deflection or whatnot, uh, but he makes very good decisions. He knows when to eat a play, like take a sack, throw an incompletion, you know, he knows when to do the right thing, and that's very, good for somebody his age because he's only started like one full season at Ohio State and for him to be that mentally mature in the game of football is a very very good thing and his pocket presence and mobility he's not a guy who is athletic outside of the pocket but inside the pocket he knows where to move he knows how to climb up in the pocket he knows how to step back and escape you know get to the right gap and to step up and just to make a clean throw so that he can get the ball to his wide receivers and now looking at some of his weaknesses I have mobility deep ball accuracy making plays off schedule he struggles against real pressure, has trouble diagnosing pressure, and he doesn't take a lot of risks. Now, we've seen in today's NFL that taking risks sometimes can, it can kill you, and sometimes it can benefit you very, very well. We've seen that with the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes loves to take deep shots down the field, and sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't, but Dwayne Haskins is a guy that I don't see taking a lot of shots down the field. He's a very dink and dunk player. He likes to throw, you know, slants over the middle, comebacks, curls, drags, stuff like that. He's not a guy who typically likes to attack down the middle or even down the sidelines of the field unless it's dialed up for him to call it. He doesn't usually look for those deep routes and stuff like that. And making plays off schedule is another thing that I have noticed that he's not very good at. If he gets pushed out of the pocket, then nine times out of 10, he's not making a good play or he's not making a play at all. And it's just an incomplete pass or something like that. He's not very good making plays off of different platforms. So if he can stand in the pocket and he can get good protection, he's going to be a 75% completion guy on the day. But if you can create pressure and get him to move out of the pocket, then there's more a likely chance that you will win that game. And I saw that in the Purdue game and I saw it in Penn State. Even though Penn State didn't win that game, they did a great job early of getting him outside of the pocket, getting him to, you know, forcing him outside of the pocket to make plays where he wasn't comfortable doing those things. And that really paid off for them. Even though they didn't win the game, they got at him early and they found a way to, uh, you know, have defensive success doing that early. And another thing is his trouble diagnosing pressure. Now I get that he's a young guy and he hasn't really played a ton of collegiate football yet but there there were certain games where you know the corner would walk up right next to the defensive end and he would just not call anything he would just st straight up hike the ball and then the corner would come in and it'd be a corner blitz or he would see a linebacker walk up and then not tell any of the offensive linemen you know that's a guy that we need to pick up or he wouldn't direct the running back to pick that guy up that uh, cost him a lot of the times because the pressure would get to him and then he'd have to pretty much just throw the ball away which is another weakness of his he struggles against a real pressure pressure. So if all of the offensive linemen are blocking very well and the defensive linemen still get a push, he is still comfortable as long as none of his offensive linemen are getting beaten. Now, when they are getting beaten, he is very erratic and he doesn't, I don't, I don't, I watched about every single game that he had played at Ohio State, at least uh, this year that he started. If there was true pressure in his face, I don't think he completed a single pass. And that's a little bit concerning because in the NFL, guys get free all the time and you're going to have to be able to, you know, make a throw under duress, which 
he wasn't typically good at and that's like real i call it like real pressure because like that's a guy free shot at you how are you gonna react and how are you gonna deliver that ball and it's understandable that you don't complete every one of those passes but still in the end i still expect you know at least some of those passes to get complete i think i i, I like legitimately i don't think i saw a single play that where he got blitzed and it was a one-on-one -on -one, like the dude was free at him i don't think he completed a single ball i think he was just like screw it i'm throwing this one away and like i mentioned in the intro the second prospect we're gonna be taking a look at today is drew Locke. and some of the strengths that i have down for him are he has a quick release and a strong arm he's sneaky athletic he's great at making plays off schedule and outside of the pocket he can change his arm angle to fit uh and he passes with no issue he has great deep ball and sideline accuracy and consistency and he's a great rpo passer now just talking about some of these really quick making great plays off of schedule and outside of pocket so i've noticed that if he can get outside of the pocket and if he can you know start running and keep his eyes downfield he can direct traffic very very well he can tell his receivers go here go there and even you know running out off of one foot he can make a very good play he made it a crazy insane play in the bowl game i can't remember the name of the bowl game i think it might have been like the tennessee music bowl or something like that but he made a crazy insane play in that game where he was rolling out of the pocket and off of one foot just delivered a dime all the way down the sidelines to jalen knox and it was just a beautiful beautiful play and he can do that i wouldn't say like consistently that he was not going to do that every play obviously but he's a guy that can go do that if you need to if a play breaks down he can get outside of the pocket scramble and throw to some guy downfield and continue to extend the play and great deep ball and sideline accuracy and consistency he really does like to take the top off of defenses and he had a very good weapon to do so with albert oguibanam and with emmanuel hall at mizzou i don't know it depends on what team he goes to but he may not have that at the next level but he's still a guy who likes to challenge the defense deep and that's something that has become very very prominent in today's NFL is taking deep shots, getting your speed search to go down the field and, you know, setting up shot plays and stuff like that with all those, you know, fake jet reverse sweep play actions and whatnot. He's also sneaky athletic. So he's not a guy that is going to, you know, he's not going to run a read option every single play and he's not going to take off like Kyler Murray or Lamar Jackson. But if you do need to get three or four yards and the play breaks down, he can get outside the pocket and he can scramble for the first down. He was a former basketball player at high school at Lee Summit, but I, I mean, he's none of his strengths are just like I, I think some of his strengths are like very good like his quick release and strong arm he's got a very very snappy very quick release and you know he gets the ball there in a hurry it, even though it isn't the prettiest motion it definitely isn't the ugliest motion that you could have and he does get the ball there on time but i wouldn't say anything just like none of the his strengths make him the best overall quarterback in this class he's a very well-rounded quarterback and i think that he definitely is deserving of a first round overall grade and i hope that he gets taken in the first round because that's where i believe he should go now now taking a look at some of his weaknesses he's not he doesn't have very sound fundamentals he gets very stressed under pressure he tries to make plays when they're not there he needs to learn when to eat a play his accuracy can sometimes be a little bit of a weakness his decision making is shaky at times and he doesn't always step into throws now these may be some pretty big red flags but these are some red flags that Patrick Mahomes also had now I'm not comparing Drew Locke to Patrick Mahomes in any way but there were a lot of people like Patrick Mahomes is too erratic and his fundamentals are too bad for him to ever be super sick successful in the NFL and in his first full year as a starter he threw 50 touchdowns so I mean I'm not I'm not saying that he can't get away from these weaknesses but these are definitely pretty big red flags uh, not having sound fundamentals his footwork isn't that good in the pocket and I mean his release you can't really I mean you can like tweak with a basketball release like Tristan Thompson used to be left-handed and then he switched to right-handed and people wanted Lonzo Ball to tweak his jump shot a little bit and I think he might have over the last offseason uh, but with Drew Locke it's really hard to tweak a throwing motion and his throwing motion works for him and it works very very well it helps him to you know he can bend his arm angle and he can change it and it doesn't bother him all that much but with a guy like Dwayne Haskins him changing his arm angle really makes him way more inaccurate than he is but with Drew Locke it's pretty consistent across the board whether he has to throw a ball sidearm or over the top or something like that it works for him so I'm not gonna say that his fundamentals at least in his throwing motion are bad but his footwork isn't very good and at least in the pocket sometimes he just stands still and uh, going over to one of the other points he doesn't always step into his throws a lot of the times he's flat-footed and he doesn't lean into his throw and he doesn't use his lower body he just pretty much relies on his upper body and his core and his you know his right arm to get the ball where it needs to be and I feel like if he incorporated his feet and his lower body into some of his throws because there are definitely some throws that you don't need to like you know plant your right foot and step into and just zing it out there like if you're throwing a little lob screen or if you're you know throwing a little lob corner you can definitely you know open up your chest and throw the ball and lob it a little bit you don't need to like put all the zip in the world on it but there are definitely some throws that I see to him make like slants and drags and stuff like that where he could definitely step into those throws and get the ball there quicker and decision making is shaky at times
sometimes and also he, him trying to make plays when they're not there those are kind of similar to me because there's sometimes where a play breaks down and he's running around and i saw it happen in the alabama game a few times like he was running around in the pocket looking for something to happen with quinnon williams and raekwon davis and anthony jennings just staring him down and that's when you need to get rid of the ball or that's when you need to just take a two yard sack instead of trying to scramble outside of the pocket and you know try and pick up a huge gain when it's not really there and that's something that is like goes with the decision making being shaky at times he needs to learn when to eat a play and when to not to eat a play so if you can extend a play and there's like say there's nobody outside of the pocket and there's nobody chasing you then you can definitely roll out and try and make a play then but if there's guys bearing down on you and you don't see an initial read i wouldn't try to make a play that way but he still tries to do that and sometimes that gets him into trouble and very stressed under pressure is the last point i'm gonna go over when he gets pressure his feet just get really really like he like is almost jumping up and down in the pocket he's just like sitting there and he's bouncing 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 around and i think that messes with his flow and his delivery a little bit and it gets him off track and it gets him out of his rhythm like when with pressure bearing down on him it's kind of like the Dwayne Haskins thing like Dwayne Haskins didn't do with direct like this guy's gonna sack me pressure and Drew Locke is like that but kind of in a better way like he can deal with a dude running at him because he'll take the shot and he can still deliver the ball uh, at least just more consistent consistently than Dwayne Haskins can but if the pressure is constant like three plays in a row then he starts getting really erratic and sometimes he might throw a pick or make a bad play or his decision making is off all right, so here we are taking a look at the grades that I've given both of these prospects. Starting off with Dwayne Haskins, I gave him an overall grade of 77.2. I gave his arm talent an, a 9, and these are all out of 10. I gave his arm talent a 9, his accuracy an 8, his footwork a 9, his pocket presence a 9, his mobility a 5, his playmaking a 6, and his decision making 8. Arm talent a 9, he's got a zip on the ball, he's got a very strong arm. Accuracy an 8, I gave it an 8 because he is very good over the middle of the field and was short to intermediate routes but he struggles deep and especially when he needs to put the ball like in the back of the end zone he's not very accurate uh with those types of throws footwork a nine he's got great footwork in the pocket and he's he knows how to move his feet and where to move his feet and he's not erratic or anything like that mobility a five he doesn't have the escapability and the playmaking ability outside of the pocket and he can't really he's not a very he's not a threat to run the ball at all unless you just like drop back and go zero man if you have a spy on him which you probably don't need at the next level he's not going to do much running at at the NFL level but in college he did and when he did it wasn't very successful he had a couple rushing touchdowns on the season but those were against Maryland and they were like three yard runs so his mobility is very very limited his playmaking is pretty low because at least out of 10 I, it's lower than what a lot of people may think uh but I just don't think that he has like the true ability to escape the pocket and to make plays outside of it I saw him struggle doing that against Penn State against Purdue against Maryland but if a team if a defensive team lets him sit in the pocket and do that then they will tear him apart all day which is exactly what Michigan did we didn't bring enough pressure and he just literally tore us apart and then decision making an eight like I said in the when I was going over his evaluation he's a very smart very cerebral quarterback especially for how young he is in terms of experience i mean he's 21 but he has only started like one full season at ohio state and so the fact that he has made as good of decisions as he did throughout the season is a very very good thing especially going into the next level now moving on to the grade that i gave drew Locke. overall i gave him a 74.4 in the individual categories i gave his arm talent a 10 his accuracy a 7 his footwork a 6 his pocket presence a 7 his mobility a 7 his playmaking an 8 and his decision making a 7 a lot of sevens right there very middle of the road for Drew Locke in terms of the individual categories. Now going over some of those categories, arm talent at 10, I think that he has, you know, probably the second best arm talent in college football right now, pretty much outside of Kyler Murray. Drew Locke, uh, to me, arm talent is how fast you can throw the ball and the type of windows that you can fit the ball into and the type of throws that you can make. So if you can, you know, fit a ball through three defensive backs and get it to your receiver on a post route and you can do that consistently, then you're automatically going to get a 10. Drew Locke can fit the ball into a lot of places that a lot of other the, a lot of these other quarterbacks in this draft class can't because some of them are immobile like Daniel Jones and one well, Daniel Jones isn't immobile but you know he's more of a pocket guy and Dwayne Haskins some of those guys don't have the arm talent that I think Drew Locke has because they have a part of their game that's missing because they aren't as mobile as him accuracy is seven he struggles with accuracy from time to time but I feel like once he gets into the NFL a lot of his issues at least accuracy wise were caused because of drops by his wide receivers and once you get into the NFL those guys are getting paid to 
catch balls. So they're going to go out there and they're going to try their best to do that. And I get in college, you know, they're also trying to catch those balls so that they can get, you know, recognition and get their name out there and stuff like that. But they're less refined than people who are already in the NFL, especially if he gets to a place like Denver, where there's a couple veteran wide receivers, or maybe Miami, where there's guys around him who've been playing for a while that have pretty sure hands, then he'll be okay with the accuracy at least. Footwork is six. I gave that a six because he, his footwork isn't very good. I wasn't going to give it like a four or something like that because it is good from time to time. It's just very consistent. And especially when he gets blitzed, it's bad. But for the most part, it's okay, but it's not anything to, you know, it's not anything special. Pocket presence is seven. He gets lackadaisical sometimes in, you know, pre in like pressure and feeling that and stuff like that. And sometimes he doesn't step up when he needs to. And sometimes he doesn't escape when he needs to stays in there too long, all that good stuff. Mobility is seven. He does have the ability to run the ball. Sneaky athletic is like what I said when I was going over his evaluation. He can run if he needs to. Kind of like the Andrew Luck athleticism where, you know, he's a guy who's not going to take off every time that there's an opening, but still he can, you know, run and get four, five, six, seven yards if he needs to. Playmaking an eight. He has the ability to get outside of the pocket, make any throw that he needs to. You know, he can direct traffic, like I said in the evaluation part. He's a guy that can get outside of the pocket, make more room for his receivers and open up more zones so that he can fit the ball into different places and get bigger gains than he would have if he would have just stayed in the pocket. And decision making a seven, gave that a seven because it's shaky sometimes. Sometimes he tries to make plays when they're not there. He takes a sack when he could have just thrown the ball away. He throws it to a deep route receiver when a middle one was wide open. You know, he tries to run for a first down when he could have just, you know, taken a two yard sack and done something else. But you know, it's just, it's a little bit iffy and that's why I gave it a seven. All right, so that is gonna do it for the video, guys. Please leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy the return of the Versus Series Season 2. Hopefully, I can pump out more videos, cover all the positions. I mean, except, I mean, offensive line, to me, is just, it's so boring to watch, and I don't really wanna have to break down offensive line prospects for you guys. I mean, I'd rather just stick with skill positions, defensive line, stuff like that. Offensive linemen do matter, but they're probably not gonna be a staple of the Versus Series on this channel. But hopefully, I can get around to all the positions. I only did like four episodes episodes last year so hopefully I can get around to more positions this year cover all of them is what I hope to do and uh yeah so if you guys did enjoy please leave a like and subscribe it really does help out the channel go grow I really do appreciate how you guys uh the support that I got on my mock draft and my videos recently have been getting a little bit more views uh than you know they had in the last couple months so I really do appreciate you guys for that and uh yeah it's gonna do for me guys I am TJ and I'll see y'all next time peace <laughs>